All right, well, let's switch gears now. And turning to leadership and what business can learn from high-profile departure of Cricket Australia's coach, Justin Langer. For more, we're joined by Joy Deep Hoare from People, Culture and Strategies Now Live. Joy Deep, great to have you in this morning. Look, this was a scene that played out in the public eye. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think it was um, it was very telling and, and I think a sign of the times as to how all of this played out. And it's it's interesting always when you're looking at the sporting context, it's kind of not quite public life in the same way that politics is, but nor is it uh, nor is it private uh, life or the or the private sector uh, as these things might play out otherwise in the in the corporate world. But what what I found very interesting was that here we had someone who, uh, at least in terms of some key deliverables. Uh, whether it comes to winning the the most recent World Cup or a, or a successful uh, victory in the in the most recent Ashes series, he was doing very well in terms of certain aspects of his performance, and I think everyone would agree. Yet he found himself very much under pressure for a for a sustained period of time, and from what we understand, that was because of having a lack of support amongst those people who he was leading. And and I think this is really significant in terms of what it tells us about some societal shifts that have occurred over the last three or four years. And I think if you if you look at, for example, the significance of the Me Too movement, you look at what's happening in terms of the respect at work in the, in the parliamentary context, all sorts of things are giving a lot more weight to employee and, for want of a better word, people power. And I, and I think the thing that um, leaders have to be very mindful of is the new world is one where you can be doing key parts of your job and what you might think are the most important parts of your job very well, but find yourself unsupported by your board or the people who you report to or are accountable to because they themselves are concerned about the public scrutiny that might happen if you are seen to be uh, a bully or uh, too intense or whatever it might be very alarming for a lot of leaders. And I think uh, while it's a sporting context, I think there's a lot to be taken away and to be focused on from a societal perspective. Joy Deep, I'm a bit of a cricket fan from way back. I remember very similar things with John Buchanan as the Australian now cricket coach back in the day. A lot of the players didn't like the way he went and did things. And a similar kind of scenario played out, but obviously much more uh, focus this time, a lot more media scrutiny than what we saw back then. Yeah, that, that, that's right. And, and these things playing out in this, this public eye where we know that the, it, it's not like a, a rank and file group of employees who don't have easy access to the media or don't have regularly followed Instagram accounts and who aren't going to be asked questions about whether they back the coach or, or back their leader. It's, it's, it's different in that particular way. And I think um, the, the real question for organisations when it comes to how they recruit is, is, is a quite a simple one in this context. Are we looking for people who are going to be popular and who whose leadership style is one that is based around perhaps a level of connectivity with their team members, their employees, um, or in this case, players? Or are we first and foremost concerned about someone who is going to deliver the results for us that we need to deliver in order to have a successful sporting team, which then flows into commercial revenue and, and, and people coming through the gates and all of that kind of thing? Um, these are the questions that it's easy to answer in a glib way for organisations and boards and say, oh, well, we want someone who can do both. But, but the reality is that it, it's not necessarily that easy and it's quite difficult to find someone who will be able to straddle both. Yeah, because Justin Langer himself made the comment that he was coming across as too intense. So, so how do we approach this then? Well, I think he would say, and I think has said, that um, he came in at an extraordinarily challenging time with uh, what had happened in Cape Town and the scandals that were that were surrounding the team. Um, it was an extraordinary turnaround, and I think from uh, from a corporate perspective, you would be you would be lauded um, for for what he was able to do. Um, but when it comes to how you go about affecting that turnaround, where clearly some of the issues are deep seated cultural problems within a workforce, a playing group. That's not to say that they don't have other skills or have other talents, but there were without a doubt some significant cultural challenges that he had to unpack and, and effectively rebuild one of the most high profile and critical sporting teams in this country. And some would say, how do you do that without a certain level of intensity? Do you just hope 
do you just guide? Do you just try to give people some literature and say, well, here's, here's what people are saying, are you happy about it? Or do you have a bit more of a command and control style? And, and, and I don't think there's necessarily a right or wrong in this, but we need to understand that some of those uh, important outcomes that need to be achieved, whether we're talking in sport or in corporate Australia, can only happen through a certain level of intensity. The real challenge for organisations is, are you going to say that employees have the right to challenge that? Are, do you, are you going to give employees the right to say, well, we just don't like it? And, and assuming that it's not illegal and doesn't fall foul of you know, bullying laws or harassment laws, is it really that bad? And that's the question that organisations and, and boards are going to have to ask themselves in respect of CEOs and others. Sticking with the sporting theme, horses for courses, when it comes to selecting these leaders in the future, when these businesses go and make that decision, do they have to make it crystal clear, this is the purpose that you're coming in for? So we know that uh, when that is being achieved, that would go and end the tenure between the two. Well, let, let's face it, I think um, if a sporting team is not performing well, and there are many Australian sporting teams in, in, in certain contexts that are not sp- uh, performing well, whether we're talking an NRL team or an AFL team or whatever it might be, Um, The brief that is typically going to be given to a a coach that is coming in in that role is, you need to make this team perform well. We need you to improve the results. And and whether it's articulated as explicitly or that, that is is known. Um, The brief is very clear. The the question is, are organisations willing to say at that point, well, we need you to do it and we are only happy to support you doing it if you do it in a way that is going to be popular with the players? And these conversations are not happening. And so we take that in a corporate context, it's exactly the same thing. An underperforming division, an underperforming business is looking at a a new leader to turn the performance of that business around. And the conversations around style um, are are very rarely had. And and whether they should be had in more detail or not, I think is is an important question. But the good organisations are not going to embarrass themselves as a result of allowing this kind of situation to happen. And and, uh, rightly or wrongly, there's been a great deal of embarrassment for a a huge number of individuals in this particular situation and very few winners.